Hi, my name is Dina Tsikarov. I'm a fifth year graduate student at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, and I study HIV cure research in Dr. Katerina Dadachova's lab. This is my friend Michael Beckert, who's a neuroscience graduate student and also a wonderful artist who will be helping me make some animations and visualizations to make my research more accessible to a non-scientific audience. I went into engineering as an undergraduate because I always like to fix things and solve problems and figure out how things work. I was really just trying to make sense of the world around me. I also liked math a lot. I'm a geek, uh, so I, I found it nice to be able to answer my questions with mathematics. And I loved engineering, but it was much more fun to be able to apply it to real living things and see how a lot of the same principles that were true in the more rigid world were also true in the, the fluidity of, of how our body and tissue and blood all function together. The reason I decided to come to Einstein was because it had expertise in a lot of the diseases I was most interested in. I like infectious disease, this idea of battling against something from the outside, and Einstein has an extremely strong research group in TB as well as HIV and malaria, and so I wanted to try out all three of those labs to see which I wanted to focus on. The development of antiretroviral drugs against HIV was probably one of the biggest medical successes of the last century and allowed HIV-positive patients to live much longer. But antiretroviral drugs, also called ART, can't kill cells that are already infected with HIV. What they can do is protect healthy cells from becoming infected. They do this by arresting the life cycle of HIV. So a population of infected cells continues to persist in the patient's body. There are reservoirs of infected cells hiding in the blood and in areas like the gut and the brain where the antiviral drugs can't penetrate, and so the disease continues to progress. The opposite side of the coin is that now that we have people living longer, we're starting to see all these problems with uh, HIV-associated dementia and Alzheimer's and cancer and the, these really long-term diseases it's become clear that we need something to actually kill the virus, to, to eradicate it and not just suppress the infection in the body. Why is this significant? In order to target this problem of infected cells persisting in the body, my lab turned to a technique called radioimmunotherapy, RIT, which has been used extensively for cancer, but no one's ever tried to use it for infectious disease. So we're the, the first lab trying to put this to work. RIT is basically an antibody which targets things attached to a radioisotope which kills things. So together, you have a guided missile that moves through the body looking for infected cells. RIT passes by healthy cells and stops when it sees infected cells that are studded with an HIV protein called GP41. When the antibody binds, the attached radioisotope irradiates the cell which induces double-stranded breaks in the cellular DNA. When the cell detects that its DNA is damaged, it programs itself to self-destruct to protect the rest of the body. This is how RIT kills infected cells. We used two approaches. First, we took cells from healthy individuals, put them in a Petri dish, infected them with HIV, added antiviral drugs, and then treated with RIT. The second approach was done in collaboration with the Montefiore Center for Positive Living, led by Dr. Barry Zingman. We took cells from the blood of HIV-positive individuals in the Bronx who were already taking ART drugs. We wanted to see what would happen if we treated these cells with RIT. And what we found in both approaches was very similar effects regardless of the antiviral drug that the person was being treated with, which is good. It means that RIT might be effective uh, in a variety of different treatment conditions. We also saw that increased doses of radiation led to increased killing of infected cells, which was also good. And what was interesting, then we didn't necessarily expect from the beginning, was that the two drugs, RIT and ART, actually worked better together than either alone, which has a lot of implications for subsequent clinical trials and not needing to take patients off of ART in order to treat them with RIT. The current results are, are strong, they're really exciting, but because HIV is considered a chronic disease, especially in America because infected people can live for so long, before you can really test this in, in people, you usually have to go through another stage of animal models. So our next step is going to be moving into, hopefully, animal trials. We can all get together and discuss who likes which project. Kate is a wonderful mentor. She's fairly hands-on, so I, I bother her, I don't know 
several times a week to several times a day with questions about my experiment, showing her data, asking her her opinion. It's really nice to have a, a PI who can really advise you on lab technique as well as just the overall theory of what you're doing. I personally like having a, a PI who's available because a lot of times I feel like you spend weeks troubleshooting something that maybe if you had a, a comfortable relationship and you could ask, you could get an answer in 20 seconds and move more quickly through your work. Uh, and, and I find I have a lot of quick questions that Kate is able to advise me on.